Good afternoon, students. Um, I have another video that we're gonna try to show you today. Really beginning an important foundational video. Pencils and erasers. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do today is talk about three things. The hardness of these pencils and how they're different and why you would use each one. The hardness of the erasers, why you would use each one. And the practice tips that are that are basically what I would challenge you to try out this next week. And uh, hopefully you have one of these types of pencils at home. So let's jump right into it. So here's how there's a scale to measure pencils. And this is basically the entire scale. I actually found them in my collection at home that I have almost every hardness of pencil. Um, they're all based on how hard the lead is, okay? And each one has a different purpose. Um, so, basically what you need to know is that anything with an H on it is hard. The lead is hard. And what that means is if you are into digital art or if you are into um, drawing something that you want to erase, like a draftsman who's drawing buildings and things like that, you would want to use one of these pencils. This is one of my travel pencils. It's very hard. Um, in fact, so hard, I, uh, my mom got that for me, but it's so hard I don't often use it. I press too hard and indent the paper. And when you're indenting the paper, you know that it's not the right pencil for you because you're pressing too hard. Um, no, do you wanna try one of these H pencils, like a 3H, and let's see if it even shows up on the camera. And while he's drawing with that, um, I want you to know that the middle of the, of the category is the number two pencil they talk about in school. It usually says HB number two. If I were to recommend an, a pencil to use that's a number two pencil that you can buy at any store, it would be the Ticonderoga. As any teacher can probably tell you that these sharpen better than all the other cheaper pencils. Yes, you may get a better deal with another pencil, but the Ticonderoga seem to be the best quality. Um, and then moving over into this side of things, it's more the art side of things. You have much softer leads for your pencils. Um, you can see, I don't know if that even picks up on the camera, but no, it's drawing very neat little details with an H3 pencil. Now, now let's put that one down and let's have you try the ones I use at the classroom if we're trying to draw something really dark, which is a 2B pencil. Uh, this is called a, a um, Design Ebony Jet Black Extra Smooth. This one's called a Sanford uh, Ebony pencil. I call them Ebony pencils. Go ahead and try to draw that one as well. Why don't you draw another drawing over next to it? Draw the same thing with a number two ebony pencil. Press a little harder. Let's see how hard if you can get a mark on your paper. Now these are the ones I use for art because you can get, as you saw what Noah was doing, he could draw very lightly. Oh, look at that. You can draw very lightly and you can draw very dark. I like the number two ebony pencils. Now you would think, well, why don't you just always use a, a darker pencil? Let's see what would happen if I used a really, really soft lead like a 6B. Let's see how dark that would be. And this pencil lead is so dark and so heavy, I barely have to push to get it dark. Let me try this one. Um, this one, I don't know what it is, but it definitely feels like a 6B. Um, I don't even know if that is actually graphite, that might be something else. And this one, the, the entire thing is made out of lead. This is called a Progresso Black. This may actually be a colored pencil, now that I look at it. Um, but if you want a very dark lead for, um, and I'll tell you what the dark leads are for. Um, if you use the sides of them in art, um, you can get some really awesome blending, and you can get some really great one of, the, one of the biggest um, challenges for an elementary, intermediate, and middle school student is shading and blending and getting a variety of, of depth or lines to create depth. And uh, one of the awesome things about the darker pencils, like the 2Bs, these pencils, better than just your regular pencil that you'd buy from the grocery store, is this. You can go from dark to medium to light. And you can practice going from dark to medium to light much easier. Um, your lines get much darker. I would say, if you don't know which type of pencil to use, which type of pencil to get, um, use whatever you got, 
a lot of the mechanical pencils I have, um, these are the ones that I use. These are probably in this range right here, near the F and H. Uh, they're probably a little, a little bit, a um, little bit of a harder lead than your standard number two pencil because that way the lead's harder, doesn't break off as easy. Um, they can get a thinner line. Um, if you're a very detailed person, you you would do well using these, but it may actually hinder you in becoming a better artist because you'll get caught up in the details. Um, I recommend if you want the artwork to be just a pencil drawing, my recommendation is to definitely use anything between 2B and softer because then you're going to get those dark darks and those light lights and you can use the side of the pencil like this to blend. If you're going to erase your pencil and put paint over top or markers over top, you can definitely use more of the mechanical or the, 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 the uh, harder leaded pencils. Okay. Now let's move on to the erasers while, while Noah's drawing here. Now I want you to try um, draw a little shape here and let's try some erasing. So these erasers are also designed from hard to soft. So if you take a look, I'm going to scoop all these over here and um, you're going to see that the erasers are, are designed from hard to soft as well. This is a typical pencil eraser. It erases okay. It takes a lot of work to erase, but like I said, um, I might have said this earlier, is that the erasers, what matters with the eraser is not the eraser, it's the paper. If you're using printer paper, um, you don't want to use anything harder than a rubber eraser. The, the regular erasers are actually a type of rubber that are used. Um, it doesn't do a very good job erasing, but it doesn't rip the paper. Um, I'm not a big fan of rubber erasers. You have much softer rubber erasers, like this art gum eraser. If you go to an art store and it says a gum eraser, that means it's made out of rubber. That means it's soft and it breaks apart tremendously. Look at that. Look how much that shreds apart and makes a mess. But it doesn't rip your paper. It's very soft. You can try it out if you want. No, I got a couple of those. Um, moving over this way. I tend to lean um, towards the vinyl erasers, which are much harder. They don't leave as much of this mess, and they erase so much more and so much better. I love them. That's what I recommended in my last video, is a Faber-Castell uh, dust-free eraser. There's a couple other, and this is a high polymer eraser. Um, it's vinyl. It's a type of vinyl. Um, it works this way all the way up to the hardest eraser I have, which is this one. It's a very, very hard eraser. I, I don't use this. This is used on really thick paper that won't tear. Um, also, be careful with erasers. Um, phthalates, from what I did my research on, um, are toxic. And they, in the eraser shavings, you won't be rubbing off toxic things all over yourself. I don't think my erasers have phthalates in them. I see Noah looking a little concerned over here. So um, that's the basics of pencils is the hardness scale. Um, I have some pretty awesome pencils that I use. This one's called a graphics woodless pencil, HB. So that means it's right in the middle. Um, if you do like pencil drawings, here's my suggestion to you. Other than using a darker eraser and probably a harder, I mean a darker pencil like the ebony pencil, I can see Noah seems to be gravitating towards that. Do you like that ebony pencil now? Yeah. Since it, it makes it a little darker and bolder line. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I usually would veer towards a harder eraser, like a vinyl eraser, um, and a because so that'll work better with the softer leads. Um, I would also recommend that if you really want that to be a finished product, your pencil drawing to be a finished product, um, paper is the key. Um, good quality paper that has texture on it, you're going to get a better artwork out of it in the end. But you know, you can still have some pretty awesome stuff with uh, just regular printer paper. With textured paper, and you use the side of the pencil, you actually see the texture on the paper when you do um, blending. So if I were to do some type of, oh, I'm doing circles today because it's simple and it's the easiest way to start um, a creature or anything. I always start with a circle, 
in four lines. When you do the side of your erase, the side of your pencil, you'll notice that it has a texture on it from the paper and a texture from the pencil. Um, so that's, those are my tips for um, if you really like actually using a pencil drawing for your actual drawing. Definitely use a darker pencil so you can get the darker darks in the lighter lights. Okay, a couple of extra tips for you guys. Um, now that you understand the difference between the hard and soft erasers and the hard and soft pencils, um, there's a couple other things you've noticed on my tray. I did not use a kneading eraser. I often don't use these because if you have really dark graphite, they really don't work well. Kneading erasers work awesome in combination with, with vinyl erasers. These are hard. These are pretty soft to medium. And you can get you can get almost everything on your paper erase on any type most types of paper, especially the thicker paper, combining these two together. Kneading erasers are excellent if you're blending and shading and you're getting a lot of um, dust and graphite all over your hands. Um, another recommendation is when you're using pencils to always have a paper towel under your hand or a little scrap of paper on your hand, especially if you're like me and you're left-handed. You're always going to get that graphite all over your hand and mess up your artworks. If you notice, there's a couple other things here I haven't talked about yet. Blenders. Blenders basically do exactly what they say. Blending sticks are used for people who know how to shade. And they blend the pastels, the colored pencils, or the graphite pencil together to make very nice and smooth um, transitions. Um, they can be sharpened with a pencil sharpener if you get the size that fits a pencil sharpener. I would not recommend getting these tiny ones. They snap and break all the time. Um, I typically don't use those. I just use my finger to blend or a paper towel. I think that's good enough. Um, you often see artists with these uh, sandpaper strips. Those are for sharpening these pencils because if you look, a lot of these thicker lead pencils, this is a very thick and wide lead. I'm not sure how well you can see that. It's not like your typical two number two pencil. Um, you, you don't always want to sharpen a whole pencil to get it to get it um, sharpened. You can also um, get some of the dirt and things off of an eraser. You can do the same thing on a piece of a scrap paper. You can clean your erasers off, clean all the graphite off of them to use them properly. Another thing I found that I'd like to buy more of, I've never seen them in a store before, are these grip sharp. Um, I don't know who makes it. Grip Sharp Co. It says gripsharpco.com. I love this. Um, I use it all the time. You can just stick it on the end of your pencil and it will sharpen your pencil for you and you can just use it as a finger grip, as a hand grip for your pencil. Parents, this is an awesome tool, but you have to kind of keep it on your pencil from then on out because the, the lead will come out at the bottom. Um, and that way you never need a sharpener. So those are a couple little tips that might help you guys out. Um, things that I've used, things that I've bought and I don't use, and things that I've bought and I do use. So like I said, I love the vinyl erasers on thicker paper. I love the ebonies. And uh, to make good drawings and to do good value scales and things like that. And watch my next video on practice sessions. I think we'll have to make a second video here for practicing Shapes, blends, blends and shapes is going to be the next thing, is how to use the, uh, the pencils to bec become a better artist. The great practices you can do that are really going to make you jump leaps and bounds ahead as an artist. Thanks a lot.